Hello and welcome back to the shack with me, 2 Echo Zero X-Ray Sierra Bravo. Today's video is the third instalment of our DX Commander build trilogy. This one I'm probably going to title the Element Strikes Back. Um, if you do find anything interesting or if it helps you in any way in this video, then please do give a big like and uh, even consider a subscribe. Okay, so there we have it, the DX Commander is fully up. As you can see just down here, connected the radials to the radial plate at the bottom there. I've got the guys out here. Now, I've personally added these stainless steel carabiners. These aren't part of the kit. and something I use a lot for a lot of burials that I put up about a pound each from Amazon and I've just roughly tied these off for now because personally I'm going to change out those guy wires as I've got two kids who trip up over anything so black guys aren't ideal and especially the fact I'm going to be using this when we go uh, camping in the caravan I want those guys to be nice and luminous so that the kids don't fall over them <laughs> okay now for the moment of truth I'm going to plug my little nano VNA, which is a small little antenna analyzer, onto the coax and we'll see exactly how we've done. And here we go. And as you can see, that's showing up some troughs better than I was expecting actually. Got some really good low peaks down there, which should mean that the SWR it's down low for a lot of places. So I'm just going to go back to the beginning. This is set for 80 upwards. So our first trough there is at 6.9 and we're showing a 1.4344 sorry SWR. As you can see now that is on 7.2 which is the higher end of the actual band plan. For the UK anyway. Sorry, can you just see that? So if I flick forward and back on that, so that's between 6.9, which is the beginning of 40, 7.2, which is more than the end. So if we check the band plan very quickly, that does show that we've got below 1.5 for the entirety of 40 meters. Let's check out the rest now. So looking at 30 meters now, that's slightly off. Sorry, just try and get that in focus. So it's actually slightly off. We're at 10.2, which is above the top part of the band, but we're showing a 1.25. I'll just take it back a little, which is just before the 30 meter band. We're at 3.2, so somewhere in the middle there, we're still in a safe SWR, but that might need a little bit of trimming up. Okay, so that's 20 meters, and as you can see, 14.4 is a little high for the trough, but if we take it back just a notch, 14.1 was showing a 3.3 SWR there, which is a little on the high side, so it looks like I'm going to have to play about with the elements but for a first attempt that is a 
pretty damn good show. Okay, the 17 meter element looks to be very close. That's below the 17 meter band. That is mid at 1.19. And that is above the top end and we're still below three SWR. That's 17 meters, so that's a damn good match. So there we have 15 meters at 21.015 which is the very beginning of the 15 meter band but the SWR there is 1.34 just try flicking it up one, see if that goes 21.3, that's slapdash in the middle of the band still at 2.14 and 21.6 is actually above the band itself but it's still below 2 SWR so that's 15 meter band element, looks to be perfect so there we have the 12 meter band, 24.9 meg, which is right at the beginning. And even if we go up to 25, which is just out of the band, it's just getting to three SWR. So the 12 meter element is also ideal. Okay, so this is the 10 meter band now, and showing at 20.2, is that? 28.2, sorry, pardon my English. And we're still pulling in a 1.9 SWR. A little bit higher than I want it really, but still within limits, within tolerance. Go back a little bit. Pulls it in at one point. 82 fluctuating around but still well within a good match okay so as you can see I've just got it plugged in now to an old 706 mark 2g on 40 meters wired up to an old leisure battery and for the purpose of testing at the moment not ideal if you can see the actual noise floor is 7.9 but we are picking something up Okay, so originally I made up my 20 meter element going off of the first reading here, which is 4.28 meters with a 20 centimeter fall bag. What I'm going to do to this now to adjust the SWR reading is I'm going to try and add 6 centimeters to the overall length, give it a try and see if that works. Right, so I'm just going to literally add an extra 6 centimeters onto the end. Pull that back. I'm just going to fasten that up with a bit of insulation tape. Do it again. Okay, so after lengthening that by the six centimeters, the SWR is better in the middle of the band. But if I just try and find where we are with that, that's actually more of a match on 13 megahertz. So it still needs a little bit of adjusting, probably make that a little shorter now by a couple of centimetres. So I'll drop that down, readjust that and check it again. Okay, so I'm just going to add six centimetres to that overall length now. Is that a good fall back? I'm going to put some insulation tape around the end, just so I can mock it up and test it out quick for the SWR. Okay, so... 
okay so that little modification worked absolutely perfectly as you can see there they're 14.4 which is above the top end of the band and we're at 1.6 click it down one oh 14 point wrong we're at 1.4 and below the band we're still at 1.4 so that little modification there putting it to the second optional element length has worked out absolutely perfectly so i'm going to lower the mass now and get it all away okay just to clear that up a little what i did there was i actually made that 20 meter element up to the second option that's actually in the dx commander's um instruction manual which is a 4.88 meter long element with a six centimeter fold bag so I literally got rid of the one with the 20 centimetre full bag and swapped it for the 6 centimetre full bag. Which meant that the bungee holding the tent is a lot shorter than it was originally, but it all still works. Okay, so for the final end make off now, I'm just going to cut myself 50 millimetres, 5 centimetres ish of the heat shrink tubing, just cutting that with a pair of scissors there and then we're going to put that over the end of the element once we've removed the insulation tape and shrink that down using a heat gun okay so I've got my 20 meter element here if you can see that, 20 meters I'm just going to slide that 5 centimeters down now over the end leaving a loop at the top for the carabiner I'm going to shrink that down using a heat gun set for 300 degrees. That should be perfect temperature to shrink that down and glue it in place. Okay, so that's shrunk down now, and I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but we know that that's finished now because the glue has just come out of the top part up here. You should see that bit of a glisten there, showing that the heat shrink and glue have melted, and that's going to hold a lot better than the electrical tape. Okay, so there we have it. We've come to the end of our DX Commander trilogy. What can I say other than the antenna system itself is brilliant. Um, the only real element I had any problem with was a 20, but by putting it to the second option of the 4.88 with a 6cm full bag, which just sorted the problem out completely, that was the only real gripe I've had with the whole thing. Um, the instructions for me, I prefer drawings more than I do written out in lists of instructions. That's just me. Coming from an engineering background, I'm used to being given a drawing with footnotes at the bottom that just tell you what materials it should be, how many newton metres you talk something up to. But that is, like I say, it's just for me. That's my learning style. It's a visual style. But I'm sure everyone else has managed perfectly well with the actual instructions as they are. What else can I say about the DX Commander? The parts that are supplied with it are top notch. The carabiners can be a little bit fiddly. The wire, the DX10 wire, is absolutely stunning. It's very, very low memory. It's a pleasure to work with. It's something that I'm probably guaranteed to buy some more for other antennas that I'm going to be building in the future. If you don't know what I mean by low memory, just as a quick gauge here, if I unfurl a bit of wire off this here, you might see, sorry, that it's more like a, a coiled spring almost. Whereas the DX10 wire, if we hold that up, has barely any memory at all. I don't know if you can see that properly. Sorry about that if you can't. But the DX10 wire is absolutely stunning. So yeah, top marks for that. That comes to the end of this video. Um, once again, 
I didn't manage to fit every little piece in there, but if you do have any questions at all, please do put something in the comments below, and I'd be more than happy to answer those. Um, I'd like to congratulate Callum on such a brilliant design and idea that he had there, and it was a pleasure to build. And would I recommend it? Yes, I would. It works brilliantly from what I've seen. Um, only had minimal use out of it so far, but in the summer months that's going to be up and down more than you can think. Until my next video, it's good night from me to E0XSB.